Hey, what's going on? How's it going? Welcome to the Baby Burrito account. Picking up where we left off with beating the last video, I'm focusing on my challenges. This is how I would normally progress if I was doing free-to-play, uh, knowing what I know with the five years of experience that I have currently. Going back and starting again, this is what I would do. I would focus on artifacts first, and I would try to do this before I start focusing too much on the missions tab. Reason being is because the artifact, the challenges are non-redactive, meaning that if you surpass a certain point and you're all the way over here already, well, if you want to finish your challenges, you're going to have to come back and do this again anyway. So I focus on this first and I keep pace with mostly this at first. You're also going to want to pay attention to using books right away, as well as leveling champions right away. Again, non-redactive. You can't come back and do it, or it's not going to count if you move further ahead. And um, so you just got to do them as they come. So like I said, I usually follow the, the challenges tab first. And then I start focusing on missions once I hit a wall within the challenges. So right now, my cat wants to say hi to you. He's a, he's a Siberian. His little, hello, your royal fatness. All right, so we're doing the getting the five chests from stage five. Another thing here is that there is a challenge, or I think it might be a mission. It's a mission or a challenge where you have to get three stars. The way to get three stars is to beat the stage with two or fewer champions without losing anybody. Meaning at the end of the fight, everybody has to be alive still. Knowing that... I would suggest that you don't rely on having multiple champions. That you just um, that you just rely on having your your two champ. Are you so heavy on your two champions? We got conqueror his food, so we're gonna use him as food. For this part, or for this series, this free to play series, I'm gonna keep the editing minimal. I want it to be as authentic and straightforward as possible so edits are going to be at the minimum i'm going to show you guys everything uh ho hopefully you are enjoying you are going to enjoy this long form content i'll do my best to talk but i'm honestly in real life not too much of a talker but hello even my cat's telling me to stop talking great hall unlocked here we're going to use our tokens to upgrade certain areas or certain stats. So here we have HP, attack, defense, crit damage, resistance, and accuracy. And you have them for each different affinity. There's four different affinities. Now, when you upgrade something here, for an example, you upgrade accuracy. Any magic champion that you have is going to get a boost to their accuracy. It's going to be just a flat boost to that. And... Um, you okay? And you get your tokens from doing live arena. Or not live arena, sorry. Uh, arena. So you just go into arena and you start going to pound town. Pretty simple. And then you get tokens there. Alright, so we're going to continue with our challenges here. If any of you guys have any questions, please ask them below. By the way, if you don't know, I'm going to be giving this account away once I hit a certain point. Beanie and I are doing this free-to-play journey together with our accounts, and eventually we're going to give these accounts away. We just haven't figured out when exactly we're going to give these accounts away. He's just a baby. He's so heavy, though. Dude, I remember my cat used to be so light, and now he's heavy. I used to be able to just easily carry him with one hand. Look at him. His royal fatness. He wasn't even really supposed to be my cat. He was supposed to be my wife's cat. When, when... Oh, you're so cute, babies. <clears throat> yeah, my man. He's purring. He's a purebred Siberian. You wanna go down there? Go hang out with your sister. Okay. 
many more chess pieces do we need to get? I do feel a a modicum of excitement doing this. I've been on my my main account, which is balls deep in the end game, and doing this free to play series. I'm I'm excited about it. I feel good. There's a lot that I forgot about being free to play, and being a newer player in general. We're going five boots, five boots. Difficulty, things as simple as upgrading gear. So when you get to uh, end game, or when you get to a certain level, this unlocks instant upgrades. I completely forgot that you have to sit here and upgrade everything one at a time. I forgot the struggle behind that. And before, people would use blue stacks and they would change the, the frame rate, they would drop it or something like that so that it would go really fast. This is a good, uh, well, I mean, it's a decent, it's a, it's a decent piece. I wouldn't invest too much on gear quite yet. One, I would save for upcoming challenges and missions, and I would save for higher rank and rarity gear. This is okay to progress. I wouldn't bring it past 12, though, unless you really want to. For offense type artifacts, you are looking for attack, percent, crit rate, crit damage. And I would like to see some speed on this as well. That would that would be nice to, for me. And then better better like a double roll would be really nice as well. But you know, in the beginning we're not gonna be too picky. Gear comes like that. Forgot my water. Um, I'm gonna get water. I'll be right back. So now we just gotta get a bunch of boots. By the way, if you're wondering how I got Sun Wukong, I used the promo code. If you don't know this, you can use the promo code. Let me show you right here. I just used it. Promo code, like during the last video. Monkey King, M-O-N-K-E-Y-K-I-N-G. And you get a free Sun Wukong. That's a limited time event, I think. And after a certain point, you won't, you won't be able to get him anymore. But I figured, the, you know, why not? This might be relevant for players coming in right now, currently, which I know a lot of you guys are, usually around New Year's and during events such as the Monster Hunter event that's going on right now. A lot of people come flocking to Raid Shadow Legends, or a lot of people start doing um, free-to-play series like myself. I've never done a free-to-play series before, but this will be my first one. And had to get Sun Wukong. I'm sure the person, whoever inherits this account, is going to enjoy having Sun Wukong on their account as well. And I have uh, videos on how to build Sun Wukong if you already have him. I have three different videos, three different builds. I'll link them down in the description below. For your pleasure or for reference. I'm feeding basically every champion that I don't think is good, by the way. I'm keeping Kale because he's going to be great in clan boss, obviously Sun Wukong, but I've gotten a lot of other champions that I just fed into Sun Wukong. These two are going to be trash, or these two are trash. Well, let me back up. If you want someone to do block revives, his A3 will do that. So if you're going into the golem and you're having some trouble with that, then he does have some play there, but it, he's not my... You know, I wouldn't worry too much about this guy. I would use him as food, so... Got our five boots. And now we're going to do stage 7 a few times. And we're going to get the support champion War or something, Maiden. Easy day. Having overcome up his Don't care about the story. And a War Priest. Who is a decent champion for progression, because she is a healer. But I wouldn't invest too much to her. If you really want to, bring her up to 50, and that's about it. She becomes food, we get all of this. End game players would say this is all trash, but because we're new, we're going to be using that gear. I'm going to be keeping all my gear, and then I'll do a gear cleanse uh, video later. Attack percent. So we have an attack-based champion in Sun Wukong. 
the best thing we can put right here if we're building him to do damage, which is what I'm going to build my Sun Wukong for. We want attack percent. The rolls are kind of bad. Not kind of, they're pretty bad. Unless I were, I were to get a triple crit damage roll, but even then, it's just not that great. So we're going to use it. We're going to keep it for now. And um, for the gloves, generally speaking, for damage dealers, I like to have crit damage, but we don't have a decent one. This is attack percent, which is okay. So we'll keep it. Now instead, instead of spending the money actually because i know that there's challenges coming up that are going to require you i don't remember if it's a any star or whatever but i do know that there's a quest where you have to or a challenge that you have to upgrade attack percent gloves so i'm going to keep this normally i would just destroy this so i don't have to spend the silver because i think it's ridiculous that you have to spend money just to take your clothes off but we're going to do that and we're also going to take a helmet. Helmet, we're going to be taking offense as well. The rolls here are... The substats are pretty bad. We have flat defense. Again, we want to see percentages. Resistance is okay, but on a damage dealer, that's not really what we're looking for. Speed is pretty good too, but only if we were going to get um, triple speed. So, there's that. Here, we don't care about these. So, we're going to... We don't care about this, so we're just going to destroy it so we don't have to pay. Equip that. Now, as you can see, bar this piece right here, that's a lifesteal piece, not an attack. We don't want to use these because it's an HP percent with some speed on an offense boot. HP percent, you generally, generally want to put on support type champions. Speed is good, HP flat is bad, resistance is bad, especially for this specific piece this is an offense piece it's meant to do damage it gives you an attack bonus every two so every two pieces for this specific set you're going to get plus 15 percent to your attack stat if i were to equip this a third sword would appear here indicating that there are three sets active currently there are only two sets active giving me a total of 30 percent to my base attack and you can see that reflected upon here if i were going to take it off i would lose about 15 percent plus whatever substats or if i were to take this one the stats were on that piece of gear rings we don't have any rings yet we're going to keep this here just because i want him going fast so we're going to keep this here like that she's trash but i'm going to keep her for now because there is a mission to equip a support type champion with hp set stuff so that's gonna stay i'm just not gonna use her we could put kale in some stuff as well we'll give him the rest of this offense destroy this though don't want to spend money don't waste resources you don't have to and let's go ahead and continue with our main mission we got that equip a champion with level four or higher artifacts what are our missions looking like? Oh, we should finish this first. So let's finish that. Trash. Food. I think in the lower stages, these artifacts don't really drop. You get a bunch of shards instead, for the most part. I think I remember that being an issue. But once you go up to a hard or brutal difficulty in the campaigns, you start to get more artifacts. That was one. How many more left? That's two. We only got two. Oh, we gotta get two more. Alright, guys, let's do this. It's 
one. Gotta get one more. There we go. Come on, one more. There we go, we got it. Defense, it's okay. Oh, here it is. Equip a support type champion with one, two, three HP sets. So let's go ahead and do that. This is our support champion. And these are the HP sets. These are the life sets. So we're just going to throw whatever on her. We don't really care. Actually, that's not true. There is going to be a, a challenge or a mission that requires you to have this entire bottom row with HP percent. I think it's HP percent. Or it might be that it's an attack based champion with attack percentage on the bottom three but we're gonna we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're going to try and give hp percent stuff to her just in case so we're gonna destroy that don't need it hp percent actually let me make this easier i forgot that this is here now Ah, only those two. Okay, so we got one. So I'll just throw some random pieces on for her here. Just to get the mission out of the way. Or the challenge out of the way. Get all of that. Collect the book. Um, the book. The book. Okay, and equip an attack. Get two. Hmm. Yep, here it is. Three offense sets. So the next area, area, the next area we're about to go into is the sewers of Arnok, which is why I held off on progressing in my missions because guess what? Now we have to do the sewers of Arnok. So let's go ahead and do that. Quick. Win three, win three, win three. Okay. Oh, when it comes to your pots as much as possible i would refrain from taking these right away because the amount of energy that you receive is based on your level so right here it says half or out of 57 so if i were going to use the energy pot that i got from a daily login reward or from an event i would only get 57 but in the beginning you progress your levels pretty quickly by the way if you want to level up your account the fastest way to do that uh the fastest way to do that is to do 12 6 or whatever the highest level is but stage six that's the fastest to grow your account your account progression level is different than any of your champion levels by the way like there's no effect all right and we are part of an artifact enhancement event so that's good and we're also in dungeon divers that's also good we're not going to take that quite yet. And what were we doing? Okay, sewers. No, we were going to equip. Let's actually go through the sewers first. Wait, hold on. Forgot. Mission, equip. Level four or higher. All right, so now we're just going to upgrade Sun Wukong's gear. I keep forgetting I can't just. Oh, and I can do four. Okay. Oh, it's not instant. I have to sit here still. Goodness. So for offense rolls, for this specific set, remember it's offense, ideally we want something like attack, percent, crit rate, crit damage, and speed. We have speed here, but we have defense flat. This is a bad roll. And resistance is also something we don't want on a damage dealer champion as well, which is what Sun Wukong is. He's, a, he's supposed to be a, a damage dealer, uh, at least the way that I'm building him. Again, he is one of those champions that you have options you have the flexibility to build them as a support champion as a hybrid champion and a attack champion and this is a good role we got a crit rate let's go ahead and do this as well can't wait to get the 40 this this is such a time waster but they got to give you every little every little thing to make you feel like you progressed Uh, 
a nice roll would have been crit damage, but that's okay. It's not like we're going to invest too much into these pieces anyway. So. Lifesteal, especially early on, is a really good set to have if you're struggling. However, the downside to having lifesteal is that you become reliant on it. To me, lifesteal is like training wheels, or lifesteal gear is R. They're like training wheels. If you rely on them too much, then you become too reliant. Well, don't become. The point is, don't become too reliant on them. Learn the characters, learn and learn how to build around using a, seal, a life steel set. You don't want to rely on that too much. Might as well give Kale something. Flat stats. Crit damage. Something. Okay, we took that. Now we can start doing. The um, se uh, second stage. And again, we're only going with two people, two champions, so we can three star everything because remember, it's going to be part of the missions to three star everything. Kale's really good as a farmer. When you start out, let's say you've already started and it's past the 72 hour mark, or you didn't use the right promo code and you didn't get Monkey King and you only have Kale, then you'd want to build Kale out, max him out, try to get him to level 60. The point of me mentioning this is because one of the fastest ways to level up your champions and rank up all of your champions is by getting your campaign farmer, which is, in your case, if you don't have Sun Wukong or somebody better, it's going to be Kale, because Kale is an attack-based champion. He's able to nuke through the waves with his A2. He can do some serious damage with his A3 as well. You're going to be doing... When you start farming, meaning when you start doing 12-3 or whatever stage you get to over and over and over again for silver, which I don't recommend, or for... unless you're doing stage 3. More on that later. Trying to level up your champions, Kale will be the one to do that. I forgot where my train of thought was going, but yeah. The point is, don't spread out all your resources trying to get all of your champions up to like level 60. Don't build too many level 50s. Try to stack up and build um, your first 60 and then your second 60, because that's going to be the real challenge. Just gonna do this a few times for the challenge. And I'll check where I'm at with the challenge. There it is. Win three helmets. Is there another... Always looking ahead is a really good thing to do. Just to see what kind of um, missions are coming up. Here, so this one's going to stand out. Equip a rare attack champion with six offense artifacts of level 8 or higher. So keep in mind you're going to want to have Kale set aside, ready to go in offense gear. So don't sell everything right away. Especially early on, what I do is I keep most gear... Because I know that there's going to be campaign missions or challenges that are going to require a certain amount of gear. And if you, for an example, I made this mistake a long time ago. There's a mission to equip um, an attack-based champion with a bunch of attack percent gear on the gloves, the chest, and the boots. But I ended up selling the boots because I was like, I'm only going to keep speed. Well, guess what? I had to go back, spend a lot of energy, do a lot of runs to try to find and have it drop a attack percent boot. So I keep everything from the from the get-go, mostly. Got to equip another champion with offense gear, offense sets. Here, this one. Win attack percent from stage 4 of Arnok on normal. So what I'm going to do is I'll do my best to get here and try to make everything line up but it's going to be a little bit difficult because we're after we're going to have to go all the way to stage seven as well but let me as always focus first on doing the challenges three helmets and the common and uncommon I, I just saw it right here actually Well, two things to know. 
right? So the XP that you get is divided. If I had Kale in here, or if I had Sun Wukong by himself, that one champion would receive all, let me show you, would receive all of the XP. But more people you have in your fights, the more the experience is going to be divided. Which is not bad, it just depends on what you want. Like, if you want Sun Wukong, or whoever your campaign farmer is, to get to 60 as fast as possible, then this is the best way to do it. But if you want a lot of food, then you would start bringing in other champions. Gray and green champions, most of the time are always, with the few exception of a handful of green champions, um, and maybe Sister Militant, who is an unco or a common champion, most of them are just going to be food. So you level them up, put them to the second rank, then the third rank, and you use them to feed into whoever you need to get to 60 or whatever. See, so now as I'm doing my challenges, I'm also ranking up food. How many more helmets do I need? I keep losing track of how much I need. I already did it. Okay. Three shields. Let's try to count it. New cannon. Also use... Oh, here we are. Use this to level up your champions uh, passively. This is worth investing in and using gems to unlock. But... I would not spend the gems to level these up to level 3. It's going to get to a point where even if you have all these unlocked, you won't really be using them too much. Like, me in the end game, I have to find champions to put in here, and oftentimes, like, it's just not the most efficient. Because when I actually need something, I just pound my potions into them, and they're already done. I use, them, I use these passively, but if I could go back, I would probably only unlock 2 or 3 at the most. Because I don't really use this anymore. Faction Guardians is a, another... Actually, this is, a, this is a good thing to go over. When you do have duplicates... Uh, let me show you. Duplicates of Champions, for example, we have duplicates of Conqueror. He's part of the Bannerlord's faction. What I can do instead of using him as food, if I wanted to, but that's not what we're going to do because I, I need to rank up my Champions. If I wanted to, I could go to the Faction Guardians, go to Bannerlord's, put him in here... And any, or every time I get a dupe, it's going to give every champion from this faction, or every champion from this faction, I can't say the word faction, every champion within this faction, within this rarity, is going to be getting this boost. So now if we look at his base stats here, you'll see Faction Guardians. He has a boost of 247, but if I were to take him out, where is it? Oh, right here. Let's say I take him out. Oops. Then he loses that boost. See, it's not here anymore. But we're going to use him as food to bring up our champions to... It's going to be Sun Wukong to level 60 first. Token Traders. This is an area that is mostly for the end gamers or people who are really lucky and pull a bunch of duplicate champions meaning if you get like i don't know four or five sun wukongs like you pull them from summoning and you don't know what to, what to do with duplicates there's two things you could do you can come here to empower and you could put your sun wukong here and then you could put the copies of him in here and then he'll become what's called a plus champion mm -hmm. in an empowered champion get a lot of stat boosts Oh, it says the empowerment bonus here. So these are all empowerment bonuses that are going to apply to your one champion if they are empowered, meaning like Sun Wukong plus one, two, or three. But if you don't want to do that, then you can unbind champions. You're going to get 500 life tokens right here. Oh, it shows it right there. And you can trade those in for any of these Legos that you might want. Minaya, I would not spend the life tokens on unless you really want. Molly is a good choice. Tomb Lord is a good choice for farming the normal 
higher difficulties, like stage 21 and up. Foley is good for the arena, but he's not the best. Cernic is outdated. I would not spend 4,000 coins on him. Fushan is also a decent choice if you are ever going to get to that point. But that's Sparring Pit in a nutshell. Progression rewards, we're taking this. For your Rathalos Chase, or any of the logging champions that you're going to get, you can press L to... I have a video on it, but basically you can save this champion. If you're on mobile, I show you guys how to do it in the video. I'll link it down below how to not collect this champion and save it for uh, an event that you want to get points for, like CBC or Champion Chase. There is going to be a Champion Chase coming up soon, I think. I don't see it here. But yeah. Let's collect this. Not yet. And let's continue with our mission. Three shields. Wait, wait, wait. Three shields. Drink so much water. I'm so parched though. Three shields. That's not a shield. Okay. That's one. Coming up on three over here. And that's three. Now we have to go on to the next one, stage four, for some gauntlets. Oh wait, I didn't I didn't uh, three star it. Let me go back and take these guys out. Do it one more time. I forgot. So the first one, we gotta just do two champions or less first. Hello, babe. Good morning. You're just a baby. We have to leave soon? Oh, we do have to leave soon. Okay. Well, I have work. So I'll pick this up a little bit later, but you guys get the process for the first part of uh, this. So... I'll catch you on the next free-to-play episode. Peace. My wife reminded me that we have work.